All right, guys, here we are again. Um, this is going to be the first video of many in a series having to do with WinISD, the program I use to design subwoofer boxes. Um, so this is going to be one of the few times you guys are probably going to see me on screen here. So hopefully it's not going to get too, in the way too much of what we need to see today. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and get started, open up WinISD. After WinISD is open, what we're going to then do is go ahead and create a new project. Um, I'm just going to start from scratch with you guys here. Again, I only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to try to get as much in here as possible. This first video is only going to be uh, opening a project and getting everything entered into the program that needs to be entered in so that um, you can see the most accurate uh, how your subwoofer is going to react inside of the box that you're planning on building. So. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here in the upper left hand corner and we're going to go ahead and click create new project um, and this is a list of drivers um, the guys who made WinISD were nice enough to go ahead and upload TS parameters of a lot of subs these days unfortunately they did not have the TS parameters of the subs that I run which are digital designs um, so uh, we'll worry about adding um, drivers into this list later but for now what you would do um, if your driver is listed in here, you would find it. You would click on the arrow next to it. For me, I run Digital Designs. In the drop-down menu, you will then select whether or not you are running 615 or 715. In my case, I'm running the 715. So then we're going to go ahead and click Next. You're going to select the amount of drivers. Um, for me, it's only one. What do you know? This list goes up to 100. That's freaking ridiculous, man. But select one. Um, placement's going to be normal, unless if you are running isobaric. And you can see the, go ahead, the little uh, photo to show you on the right side there. This is what isobaric is. It's two subwoofers mounted face-to-face, -face, cone to cone. Um, they react in like a push-pull kind of way. If you don't know what isobaric is, then chances are you're probably not running isobaric. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select normal. And we're going to go next. Um, in this case, we're going to be designing a vented box. So they do have a couple of different options for sealed, vented, fourth order bandpass, sixth order bandpass, passive radiators, and ABCs. Um, chances are, if you guys don't know what it's called, you probably aren't going to be messing with it. So in this case, most of you are probably going to be dealing with like the closed or the vented boxes. In this case, we're going to deal with a vented. Next, Chevy Chev, leave it alone. I'll explain that later, okay? Project name, just enter the name of the project. For me, I like putting what sub I'm using and the size box that it's going to be in. So we're going to do uh, the DD715 in a 5.2 cubic foot box. And then hit create. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Um, so right here, we've got the graph initially, okay? So we're not going to worry about the graph at this point. We still got some other crucial information to put into this little uh, system here first before we start dealing with graph. Like I said, this first video is just the setup. Um, it has nothing to do with this big old graph in front of us. So what you're going to do is go down to the left-hand side right here. And driver, this is some information you already inputted when you were designing or when you were first opening this project. So we're going to click on box beneath it. Now, if you notice, what it has done is, is it calculated the size box and tuning frequency that um, the program thinks will be best suited for the driver that you selected. Um, this is not always the case. Sometimes it's the case. I myself am working on a project for the 715 that is in the recommended size and tuning frequency that they had said. Um, it's my first time doing that. Most of the time I, I make my own, my own decisions on that. But in this case, I want a 5.2 cubic foot box and I want it tuned at 28 hertz. So what you're going to do is type 5.2 in volume and you're going to tune or click, ah, Jesus, Click tuning frequency and I will type in 28 hertz on that. After you've done that, we're going to go down to filters. We're not going to worry about vents right now. We'll deal with that later. Um, right now, I do run a low pass filter. Um, it's ran out of a crossover that's built into my head unit. I run that at 40 hertz. Um, a lot of these amplifiers out these days have built in low pass frequency filters. If you plan on utilizing that, you need to figure out what frequencies you are going to be filtering out past. Low pass means I am filtering out frequencies higher than 40 hertz. A high pass means you're, frequencing, uh, you're um, filtering out frequencies that are lower than the specified amount that you're saying. So in this case, I'm free, uh, Jesus, I can't talk. Um, you're going to be filtering out frequencies that are higher than 40 hertz. So 
for me, like I said, I run a 40 hertz filter, low pass, add it. Um, after that, you're going to go down to signal. You're going to start inputting information here. Okay. So listening place, you really don't have to worry about. If you really want to, you can. Um, distance would be how far away you are from the subwoofer, and angle would be the angle the subwoofer is at in relative to the horizon. Um, what you do want to worry about is system input level. Okay. This is going to be your planned wattage, the wattage you plan on running. Okay. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I got a 2,000 watt amp, it's going to run at 2,000 watts. No, it's probably not going to run at 2,000 watts. What you're probably going to have is, you know, an amp that's turned halfway up. That might be, you know, a 2,000 watt amp, but it's only turned halfway up and yada, yada, yada. What you need to do is actually figure out what your true wattage is that you're running at. Um, I myself, I know that I'm going to be running at 1,200 watts. If you guys want to know a little bit more about how to actually figure out what wattage you are running, just Google some stuff. You'll be able to figure it out. It's not hard. So... Um, after you've done that, what you're going to do is specify down here in the series resistance column, okay? You're going to specify what the resistance of your subwoofer is when you wire the pair or the, wire the uh, voice coils in series. I have two two ohm voice coils on my subwoofer. If I wire it in series, it will then be four ohms. So that is that. Under advanced, you really have nothing to worry about. You can input all these temperature, relative humidity, and air temp or air pressure stuff in here. I myself, I don't worry about it. I live in Wisconsin. Every day, God, okay. As is two days ago, it was 82 degrees out. It is now, I think, like 54 degrees outside right now. So I just don't worry about this stuff. My, my temperatures fluctuate too much here in Wisconsin to even remotely think about that. But... Uh, get back on track here. Like I said though, you can fill this information out if you want. It will change the graph very slightly, not by much, but it will. Um, and then beneath this is going to be project. This is just the information that you had plugged in when you'd first opened the project, including description. If I would have wrote something in the description column when we opened the project, it would have popped up in this description place. So that right there is going to be your very quick rundown of how to open a new project, input all the information you need, and get this um, initial graph that you're looking for to show. So um, we're going to go ahead and shut this video down. Like I said, this was only how to show you guys how to just open up a new project and get all the information plugged in that you need. Um, and the next video I go ahead and show is going to be explaining a little bit more about each of these graphs as there's quite a few different functions involving uh, WinISD here. So until next time. See you guys later.